Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady and today I am getting started on refreshing some of my foodscape containers. Now, foodscaping is one of my all-time favorite things. It's just the integration of your favorite edibles right alongside the ornamental plants that bring you joy. And I do this both in ground and in containers. And containers is actually a really great place for people to start foodscaping so that, you know, you can do very specific combinations and kind of get used to the maintenance concept of not only watering, but also harvesting from these pots. So right now I have a bunch of pots that were planted last fall or early winter for the cool season and they're primarily filled with food. I have things like parsley. I also have big clumps of barley. But they're starting to get to be really difficult to keep watered because here in Central North Carolina, we're already getting into the 90s. We are, haven't had any rain. And even though I'm trying my best to keep up with watering, it's just not sustainable. So that's the sign that it's time for me to start converting these pots to grow things that are more heat tolerant. And that includes plants like peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, and then some summer ornamental plants, including my favorite Plectranthus, because that helps keep animals from eating everything that is planted in these container combinations. So let's get started. I'm gonna um, kind of convert five or six pots today. I'm not gonna take all of the plants out. Specifically, I'm leaving the parsley because the swallowtail caterpillars are starting to show up. They're eating the parsley foliage, which is precisely why I grow it, in addition to the fact that I like harvesting some for myself to eat and I don't want to take away that important food source for that great native pollinator. But it's time for me to reevaluate these and like I said, get them prepped for the realistic season ahead, which is long, hot, dry days. So before we get uh, into ripping stuff out, I just want to give you like an up close. You can see this pot, I mean, it's already dry. And, you know, you don't have to go deep and there is some water, but it's time for me to remove the barley. And I'm actually going to harvest that as like long stems so I can use it in floral arrangements. So this pot, I will keep all the parsley and then I will just add some additional compost along with some more summer edibles. You can see in this pot behind here, Actually, this is fine. This is a um, lime tree that I've been growing for years. It's doing really great. It's pushed out lots of new growth. It's starting to flower. Last year, I got like 80 limes off of this. It was crazy. And I did plant some um, kohlrabi in here <laughs> just because I had extra kohlrabis. Now, in this planter behind me, so these tall spikes, those are um, also... Uh, celery, I'm sorry, not celery, parsley, and I'm going to keep those. I'm obviously going to keep the maple until I find a place to put it in the garden where it'll live forever. And I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these violas because these are the thing that are stressing me out. They're the thing that wilts. And I, my goal is to not be stressed out by my garden, right? So if a plant starts to not perform, that's the sign that it's not the right season for it. And then in this container, you know, I've got snapdragons mixed in. And again, you see the parsley looks so good. I'm not going to remove any of that. I think I'm just going to, you know, again, get pull the barley out. It looks so pretty. It's going to look gorgeous in a vase for this season. And then I'll actually save this seed. And my goal is to try and brew with all the barley that I've grown. So none of this is going to waste. It's fine for me to yank it out now and then I'll get, you know, again, more summer plants put in here. Okay, so I have two tools that are critical for doing this approach where you're not disturbing the entire pot. And the first one is the Hori Hori. This is kind of a soil knife. You see it's got a serrated edge and it goes nice and deep. 
And then to cut the barley clumps evenly, I'm just using a normal pair of head shears. Now with the hori hori, I'm just gonna come in and I'm going pretty close to the very base. So I don't wanna really have to completely fill this up with all fresh soil. And you can see neat and organized, just like that, the whole clump comes out. Apparently I planted some potatoes in here. Have some little baby blue potatoes. Okay, now this pot is ready for me to put in my new plants. Like I said, I am gonna do, and actually dig a, a deeper hole for this tomato. This variety is a hybrid called Mountain Fresh Plus. This is from um, NC State's tomato breeding program. I've had a lot of success with the Mountain series, so I'm excited to include this. And I'm just gonna get that positioned in here. Make sure I keep the label, because I'm notorious for not remembering in the long haul. Putting that towards the back, because uh, in the long run, this is actually gonna have a cattle fence panel behind it. And now, I'm gonna strategically place the coleus. I think I'd like to put that to the side. Actually kind of more in the middle. And then I have the plectranthus, which is, you know, it's just really smelly foliage. Animals don't like it. I'm putting that towards the edge. And then I have some sweet little dianthus that are flowering. And I'm just gonna fill in some of the open spaces with these. I don't have the expectation that these will bloom all summer. This is kind of a, a right now fill in to make look pretty solution. Overall, through the summer, these other plants will grow so big that I won't necessarily need to have this much in it. So remember with pots, they're not a one and done. A lot of times you're best to reevaluate your containers kind of midway through the growing season, especially if you live in a place like me where we're frost free from, you know, most of April all the way until November. That's a really long time to expect plants to look perfect in, in pots, especially. So my recommendation always is to kind of mid season, reevaluate, remove some things, transplant stuff out of your pots uh, or pot them, get, you know, take your entire pot and put it into something bigger. And that's especially true if you're using smaller containers. Like this is a, I think like a 10 gallon pot. So I can pretty well grow in this all summer long, but I might not need to have one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, eight plants in here. And so that's sort of my responsibility as the gardener to evaluate the uh, needs of the container through the entire growing season. Okay, now that I have that potted, I'm just gonna add some additional compost and then I am going to mulch with triple shred hardwood. And I'm really stoked to finally have mulch again. You know, um, it's not that I don't like mulch, like people have asked and I don't mulch a lot through the winter season in part because like this year, we were so wet, I couldn't get my trailer out from where I keep it in the woods. It was just too wet. We literally couldn't pull it out. But um, especially in the summertime, mulch is very important. But I will warn you against using the colored mulches, especially if you are growing food crops. So the thing is, the colored mulches are just ground up pallets. And I, you know, I think it's great that they're, you know, reusing them. It's not that. It's that you don't really know how that wood was treated um, or what the wood actually physically carried when it was in its form as a pellet. 
And so that's not generally rated as going to be food safe. So, you know, if you use colored mulch in your landscape, maybe around your food crops, choose a natural mulch. Um, I just like triple shred hardwood. And I've had a bunch of questions about like, what is the wood that makes triple shred? Honestly, I don't know. I think it's whatever they have. Like we're in a season or a, a time period where everybody has gotten excited about gardening and nobody can keep anything in stock. So it's really hard to tell what exactly the mulch is coming from. Like here in North Carolina, a lot of times pine and oak are a part of it. But um, yeah, I mean, that's a question you should ask your mulch supplier. I won't have the answer to that. For you living somewhere else, that's totally unrealistic. Okay, so before I mulch, I am gonna add a little bit of my favorite local fertilizer for the summer. This is cottonseed meal. This is really primarily uh, like slow release nitrogen. And this is really to help promote healthy development for the tomato, but for everything else as well. I'm just scattering it lightly across here. I don't use a traditional fertilizer because my habit is once a month, basically every first Saturday of the month, I fertilize all of my container plants with fish and kelp emulsion. And that kind of does everything that I need. And therefore I'm not using any synthetic granular fertilizers. Um, so now the mulch, the main purpose for the mulch, especially through the summer, you know, it helps retain moisture. So that's critical. So, you know, we're over 90. You have to water these things every day. And it's also to help reduce some of the um, soil borne diseases that tomatoes frequently get when like water splashes on the soil and it goes up onto the leaves. So when I grow tomatoes, even in small pots, like when I start them from seed, I try to mulch them really early in their growing cycle. That way they don't potentially get like exposed to early blight or something. I have basically every tomato disease that exists on this property. It's really kind of silly that I am such an obsessive tomato grower because they are nothing but heartache, but I can't help it. I love tomatoes and the grocery store tomatoes suck. They don't have any flavor. So if I want a good tomato, I have to grow it myself. All right, so this is ready. I'm gonna water this in today with just normal hose water. And then probably um, in the next couple of days, I will give this a fish emulsion drench. So now I just have a couple more pots to do. final step is just to add some cottonseed meal just to the top here and then I'm gonna lightly top dress it with my triple shred hardwood mulch and this really I think the mulch in the summer makes such a difference visually it just makes the pot look more complete since I do so much winter stuff with direct seeding um, that's part of the reason that I don't mulch in the winter time um, in addition to the fact that we're just really wet here and I can't get my equipment out. So it's, again, it's something I'm anti-mulch is that I've been focusing on gardening in a way that makes me less dependent on using as much mulch. When I first started this garden 10 years ago, I was using 60 yards of mulch annually. We've gotten that down to about six yards and I primarily do it in the summer for water retention. And Again, I use triple shred hardwood. So I hope you'll agree. I think this pot uh, looks great. It looks ready for summer. It's gonna cause me less stress trying to keep it watered. Um, and you'll notice I didn't remove all the soil um, clearly because I kept a large portion of the plants in. And that's the thing. Um, you don't actually have to waste your potting soil unless you've had a disease uh, or you have roots that are like so saturated through that when you pull the plants out, the entire thing comes out. 
Um, otherwise, I say use the soil that you already have. I will frequently use soil five plus years. Um, I just think that that's a ploy to make you buy more stuff. And I come from a practical side of, of home gardening. I'm not trying to sell you unnecessary things. Now, here I have an example of a container that needed to be, you know, pulled out and ultimately planted into the ground. These plants have actually been in this square pot for like four years, and it's high time I get them planted. So in this case, this pot will get all fresh soil. Well, I'm thrilled with how these summer foodscape containers have come out. Didn't take a lot of effort, and it truly is a merging of the seasons with some of the cool season plants included with the warm season veggies. Now, most importantly, I'm gonna be able to keep up watering these, but it's really great advice to remember that if you plant something in May, you might need to reevaluate and pot it up or transplant it into the ground in the middle of the summer. Also critical to remember, I planted tranthus in all of these pots to help reduce animal browse. That's very specifically for deer, rabbits, and groundhogs. And my last trick here is you'll notice these are all in one area. I can reach them easily with the hose. So I recommend putting your pots in areas that you know you don't have to connect too many hoses together so that it's an easy maintenance for you to keep them watered appropriately. So I hope you have found this video helpful. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Breathe the Plant Lady. And I look forward to sharing updates with you through the summer season. Thanks so much for watching everybody.